will show now how to convert the Dakota Horizon that we picked in the Picking Horizons video and to convert it from a horizon to a surface object. There are things we can do with surfaces that, uh, for example, contours and con continuity of holes in the data that can be uh, repaired with a producing a surface. Okay, we've been using seismic interpretation process. We're going to go down now to the utilities process, right, left click, and then we are going to make edit a surface. So I'm going to click on that to select it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to double click it in order to bring up the form through which we will uh, make the, the conversion. So I'm going to double click it. And often when it comes up, if you've already done uh, a surface, made a surface, another surface, you will need to clear this out. The way to clear it out is just to select this surface here and hit delete. And it will come up and say, do you want to reset the settings in the dialog? In this case, I want to. So now I have a blank slate to work with. The, I'm going to put in as my main input the Dakota Horizon for video. This is the same horizon that was called uh, Seismic Horizon 1, I think, in the last video. It's the same surface. So I'm going to uh, highlight that, and then I can just use the arrow, and it will put that particular horizon into the input data. It will create a name for the output, so you don't need to put a name in here unless you very much want to uh, identify it as a surface or give it a different name. I'm going to leave it blank. I'm not going to worry about these things. I'm going to come down here under geometry, and I'm going to have it do things automatically rather than defining all the aspects of the, of the conversion. Um, and I am going to allow it to pick a boundary. As you notice, the data set doesn't cover, the seismic data don't cover the whole rectangle of the, the 3D survey. So we can put a boundary on it automatically and then it will, about the only parameter choice you have is how far to extend it out from where, where, the, uh, uh, where the data are. So I'm just going to leave it by default here to this value and I'm going to say uh, apply. And it will go through this process and it has now created down at the bottom the Dakota Horizon for video. Note that this has a slightly different symbol where it was a, um, a horizon. It has this particular symbol, whatever that almost Asian looking character is, and then this corresponds to a surface. So we're now going to select that and we're going to get rid of, or at least turn off, the uh, horizon before. I'm going to close this. I think I just recreated it, perhaps another copy. But nonetheless, we have, we have a surface. Now, this surface covers, you notice it has nice clean edges on it. It has contour lines on it. It's all red, but we can go and double click on this. And we can go to colors and note that there's no color palette here. So we're going to override the, the assumption that the computer makes. And this is the minimum, var the shallowest value to the deepest value in two-way time. And we're simply going to um, uh, OK that. So now we have a surface which is essentially contours and colors related to topography. We can do some other things. If I again double click on this surface, I can go to style and I have some choices now of the contour lines that I want to use. So contour lines are checked here, which is consistent with what we see. Um, in this case, there are 21 different levels of color within this area. We can change the increment of the contour lines. Let's say I want to take this and I want to have 25 um, millisecond contour lines instead of uh, 10 milliseconds. I can uh, choose which ones, how, how frequently there is a bold um, uh, surface. And so I'm going to set that to 4 since 25 is uh, 
four steps over 100. Um, and if I want to put labels, numerical labels on, I can click this to show annotation. And you'll have to play with the scale on this a little bit. I usually go somewhere around 300 or 400. I don't actually know what the units are. The interval is how frequently along the horizon you want to put um, you want to put features. So I'm going to go ahead and apply and see what I get. You'll notice that I have fewer contour intervals. Each big bold contour interval is now a 100 millisecond step, and I can go ahead and say OK, and I can zoom in on this to sort of see what we have. Note that it has made the uh, the bold uh, the bold lines are the even increments of 100. The uh, less um, uh, the, the the contour lines in between um, are in the uh, the less uh, less bold uh, uh, terms. Now. We can also put this in a map form. In 3D, it's all loose as to where exactly it is in terms of a map. But we can go up here to Windows, and we can pull down a new 2D window. This is one you probably haven't used yet. Uh, it comes up empty. Um, I'm going to change that to two-way time, just in case. And now I can again click on this. And it now creates a, a map view. This particular yellow line corresponds to what's in the interpretation window. Um, I haven't figured out a way to turn that off, although I can temporarily um, go in here and uh, turn that off. And then that line goes away. So I now have a, um, a map type view. Um, in this particular way of displaying it, I don't have a, uh, a graticule or a set of uh, coordinates around it, but it does give me a nice view looking down on the surface um, with, uh, with annotations. Probably would need the annotations a little bigger and not quite so close together in this case to have a, a good appearance of the, uh, of the section of the, the map. Okay, uh, thank you very much.